My English name is Melody McIver, and I am a member of Lock Soul First Nation and of the Buffalo Clan. I am a Anishinaabe and a two-spirit person. I speak to you today as a traditionally elected member of the Two-Spirit Council of the Grand Council of Treaty 3 and as an Indigenous scholar and an assistant professor at the University of Manitoba. Palestine, Gijo Andaman. Palestine, I care for you deeply. When I voice my support for Palestine as an indigenous person, as an Anishinaabe citizen, I have been told to shut up. Ooh, that I don't know what I am talking about. That I don't understand a complex situation. I am here to tell you all that I do understand and that I believe that many of my fellow indigenous peoples here understand how Palestinians are feeling today. How Palestinians have been feeling since the first Nakba in 1948. How Palestinians have felt since the Belfort Declaration in 1917. That Belfort Declaration was issued by the British government, a colonial power that Indigenous peoples in Canada are well familiar with. In Treaty 3, and here in Treaty 1, our agreement is signed not with Canada, but with Her Majesty the Queen, or His Majesty the King, whatever. So when an Anishinaabe person is told that we do not understand what is happening to the people of Palestine, should we not understand a shared legacy of living under the oppression of British-designed colonialism? I'll share a story with you. Before I even lived here in Treaty 1, I ordered takeout from an app. I thought I was just picking up shawarma, but I walked into Yaffa Cafe. I saw beautiful images of Palestine, and I saw an orange Every Child Matters shirt printed in Arabic. It was nowhere near September 30th, and at that moment, I knew, I could feel, that Palestinians understand us, that they know that what we in Turtle Island have been through as well. As an intergenerational survivor of Indian residential schools, whose family members and loved ones attended Cecilia Jeffries, Pelican Falls, and McIntosh residential schools, I do not make residential schools analogies lightly. But I mean it when I say that every child matters includes Palestinian children. Every child matters includes those more than 5,000 Palestinian children that have died in the last month under intense bombing, airstrikes, and white phosphorus. Shame! Every Child Matters includes the thousands of Palestinian children that have been injured and orphaned. Shame! Every Child Matters includes recognizing that waging a war on a captive population that is more than 50% children is an act of genocide. As an Anishinaabe person, I know what it's like to be misunderstood and stereotyped when I advocate for the life and well-being of my people and our homelands. As an Anishinaabe person, I know what it is like to be called a savage. I know what it is like to be called a human animal. Yeah. So when I say freedom, I mean that many indigenous communities continue to live under boil water advisories, despite Trudeau specifically campaigning in now two elections, saying that the boil water advisories would end. Yay! I see how Hazah has run out of clean drinking water, that Hazah has struggled since the state of Israel imposed a blockade in 2007. When I say freedom, I think of the Anishinaabe children that to this day do not have equal access to education in our own home communities. I think of the Anishinaabe children that need to leave their homes and travel hundreds of kilometers and live with strangers to attend high school. I think of the Anishinaabe children that still in the 21st century, after residential schools have finished, are still sleeping in historic residential schools, like the seven father fallen feathers in Thunder Bay that are still dying for an education that was promised to us by our treaties. Yay! When I say freedom, I think of how in the last 24 hours, 
Israeli air rides have killed many Palestinians at the Al Fakura school in the Jabalia refugee camp and another school in Tal Al Zatar, also in northern Gaza. Shame! When I say freedom, I think of how our First Nations treaties with the Crown of Canada promise a modest livelihood. And yet how Mi'kmaq Fisher and Sebekne uh, Katek First Nation and Berkshire's First Nation have been consistently assaulted and attacked for practicing our treaty rights. Shame! And so when I say freedom, I think of how Palestinian fisher folk can only dream of fishing freely off the coast of Gaza. I think of how the Israeli naval blockade since 2007 has restricted Palestinian fishing boats from actually traveling to the fish, how their boats have been seized, the docks have been bombed, and, and fisher folk have been shot at for approaching the blockade for over a decade. Shame! And I will say this very carefully. When in Anishinaabe Moen, our beautiful language that has been persecuted in these lands, we say, Oma Zibing Iwede Bichewa Sa Gichew Gaming Palestine that Bemendo Bemadizwat. That in our language simply describes here is a beautiful river, there is a great big beautiful lake or ocean. May Palestinian people live a good life. Yeah. Does my language wish any harm in that statement? No! Does, that, does my language allow me to incite any violence when I wish you to live a good life? No! no! And as an Anishinaabe person, when I am criticizing the state of Canada, Am I wishing that all of us here die as I used to criticize the state of Canada? No! All I wish for is that these apartheid mechanisms that were first designed here on Turtle Island, that were studied by the Germans, that were studied by the Afrikaners, that were studied by Israel, end. Yeah. And finally, as an Anishinaabe citizen of Treaty 3, I have a few words, I don't think he's at work today, for our premier Wab Canoe. Wabanaquit Canoe, Niga Kenda, you know me. Wabanaquit, Ginondawana, do you hear me? Isn't Listen, I will not insult your intelligence, Wabanaquit. I know that in your journalism career before entering politics, you were once a correspondent for Al Jazeera. You have heard these Palestinian stories. I know that as a fellow intergenerational survivor of the Indian residential schools in Kenora, these tools of genocide, you have taken your role as an honorary witness of the Indian Residential Schools Truth and Reconciliation Commission with the utmost seriousness. I did not have the honor of knowing your father, the late Tobasanaquit uh, Iban, but I have the greatest respect for the leadership that he carried on behalf of the Anishinaabe people as an educator, as a ceremony leader, as the founding Grand Chief of the Anishinaabe Nation in Treaty Number 3. I sit in awe at the tremendous force of spirit that it took for your late father, a survivor of the absolute horrors of Indian residential schools, to travel to Rome and present our sacred Anishinaabe spiritual items to the Pope, for what it took for Tobasanaquitabon to work towards reconciliation. Wabanaquit, I will quote your own words that you wrote in a 2009 CBC article. The experiences of my father and the other residential school survivors will remind us of a phrase that my community has adopted from the Jewish community. Gawin minawa wika. Never again. And so, Premier Wabanaquit, I plead with you. As the first Anishinaabe elected Premier of a Canadian province, can you please be on the right side of history? Yeah. Yeah. Can you be the first Canadian Premier to put your foot down to Justin Trudeau? Yeah. Yeah. What's more, Wabanaquit, can you say, Gawin Minwa Wika? Can you call for a lasting ceasefire and a free Palestine in our lifetime? Thank you for listening today. And when I say land, you say back. Land. 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 Back.